how can I keep myself in a higher vibration while living with a narcissist ex? Living with a narcissist ex. I have no choice at the moment. I am able to stay there, but it is a constant struggle, and it will be until you can get out. It, it will be until you get out. Because here's what's happening with your narcissist ex and any of us who live with toxic people is that they, like anybody else, are always creating. You, Karen, are always creating. That's just the nature of who it is that we are. God said, let us make man in our image. Creator said, let me make humans in my image so that they create. And so here we are creating nonstop. It's just that most of us aren't intentional about what we're creating. And how do we create? We create through our signal. We create through our energy. We're all just energy. And we have energy pointed in a certain direction. When we're angry, that energy is pointed in a certain direction. And when we're joyful, that energy is pointed in a certain direct direction. It's all being received by a universe that, again, is completely and entirely responsive. It never judges what we send it. I'm angry and I'm sending my signal. The universe doesn't say, hey, Crystal, is that really what you want to be sending me? Because I'm just going to have to give you what you're giving me. The universe just gives it. It returns it unto me. So you're living with somebody, essentially, who 24-7 is signaling narcissism. And what is narcissism? Narcissism is a psychological disturbance if he's actually been diagnosed as a narcissist. It's um, an ego gone wild. And this is what this person is constantly signaling. And here you are trying to live in a bubble. John Travolta, boy in the bubble, just trying to get by, y'all. Just, hello. This is what I'm seeing you do, right? How can I just survive? It's not even about how can I be joyful because it doesn't feel possible. And so for you, proximity is in incredibly important. And I know you, you can't move out. You, you have to be where you are right now. Okay, then get out. You have to get space from the constant signaling of this person. Because not only is this person transmitting into the holy responsive universe that returns unto him, and there you are living with him, so you're going to receive it, or her, by the way. Um, not only that, but this person is also creating forms in your space, thought forms to be specific, entities, entities, entities. People with unchecked emotions, especially emotions that are of a negative nature, like anger, uh, ego, mania, fear, anxiety, that's energy. It's being sent out. The universe is receiving it and returning it unto them, and they're getting more anxious conditions or fearful conditions. But not only that, they are creating entities. They're create Energy just doesn't stop, right? We know that through physics. Energy just changes. And so what that fear turns into, once it's expressed, and it's always, we're always creating, once that, what that fear turns into is a form. It takes a form. And if we feed it long enough, because we're, we're nuts, or we're not aware, or we're not introspective, and we're just a free radical in our lives, just signaling, signaling chaos. If we feed those forms long enough, they become intelligent parasitical, really. And I, this is not to speak fear into anybody because that which can be created in this way can be uncreated, which is awesome, okay? But you have to have the self-awareness to know that you can do that and then you, you can uncreate them. This person doesn't have that self-awareness. But you're living in a space, is what I'm saying, that is not just rife with the momentum of what this person is constantly creating. It is numbing what you're able to create because you're having a hard time keeping your vibration at such that you are creating intentionally positive things to return unto you because it's hard. But this person is also creating thought forms, intelligent entities, parasitical in nature. And these entities seek to continue to nourish themselves from the energy of the host. So if I am a thought form that's been created from egomania, I am invested in having my host person continue to be egomaniacal or narcissistic or dangerous or violent or whatever it is that created this energy. And so the longer you feed them, the more intelligent they become, the more invested they are in having more of that energy in the house. And now we've got a whole house legitimately. And people who go into houses to clear them, clear energy, they will tell you this. 
And in Hawaii, we call these uhani noho. You have a whole house rigged with these entities that are fueling the dysfunction that's happening in the space. All, all of which is to say, you are, in, you are with a person who's always signaling, and that's a drag. But you're also in a space that is set up in a certain way to support what he's signaling. And you are in a compromised situation because you are being impacted. Back to energy. Back to energy. When two energies come together, both are changed as a result, but the stronger energy makes the more substantial change to the lesser energy. The strongest energy in all of creation is divine God energy, period. But negative energy can also be very strong. And if you're in a compromised energetic position, which I sense that you are, and this person has strong narcissistic energy, then you are being changed more substantially by that energy. So you've got to get away from it. You've got to get out of the house. So even if you have to go spend your days in a local coffee shop or writing or doing whatever you're doing in a park or however it works for you, getting actually physically away is one way to get your vibration up. You can sage your house. You should be doing that actively. I don't know if this person likes that or not, but um, that is your space, your sovereign space, which doesn't feel like it's necessarily sovereign, meaning it doesn't feel like this person just won't walk in and do whatever. But that needs to be as calibrated as possible in alignment with high vibration. So saging, gridding, having crystals out. I mean, if, if you respond to that and feel good about it, even having saints or pictures of saints or Jesus or whatever is high vibration to you or connects you to your divinity, having those items out so that you can relate to that. Essences also help. Also feeding the mind, putting on the headphones, feeding the mind with food for the soul, not like white noise, no white noise for you. That means no TV, no media, no nothing for you, but taking care of yourself to the best of your ability while you are there, taking care of your physical body as well. This is a bigger conversation that we have to have because of all that's coming in. And this is where Neville comes in. What does Neville tell us? Neville tells us, occupy the energy of the end. What does that mean? Karen, it means when you're out at Starbucks or you're sitting in the park or you're away from, you're out of the onslaught of it all, occupy the energy of the end. The end is what you want. My goal, my goal is to be free. My goal is to be in my own sovereign space free of this person. My goal is to, what is your goal? You fill in the blanks. Neville and, and many teachers and Christ would say, to he that believeth that all things are possible, well, all things are possible. So you have to have time occupying the energy of what it is you want. The more you do that, the quicker it comes. How do you do that? Yo, catch, I'm teaching you guys tonight. Well, when you go to bed every night, before you fall, to, fall asleep, you're still awake, but you're really drowsy. This is a trance state. It's called the hypnopompic or the hypnagogic, I get them mixed up. It's a trance state though. You're not entirely asleep, but you're not entirely awake. In that state, you are highly psychic. You are also impressing upon the subconscious your will if you use it correctly. Most people just get drowsy and they start seeing things and then they fall asleep. Smart people who want to work with their intuition, smart people who want to start changing their life, use that container of time in a trance-like state right before they fall asleep to create what they want because they're impressing upon the subconscious their will. Subconscious animates our reality. I know I'm getting too technical. Read Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. Right now, everybody, Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. In this container of time, which we all experience every night before we go to sleep, Think about what you truly want as if you were in it. It has to have the tones of reality. It has to feel real in order for that impression to be made on the subconscious. And when you hook into it, when you're seeing yourself sitting in your own space and it's arranged the way you want it and the plants are where you want it and the animals are where you want it and the people are who you want them to be and you're free and it feels, you can feel the tones of that reality, you got it. Stay there as long as possible. Fall asleep within that. Within that, fall asleep. If you can fall asleep feeling the tones of reality of that, you manifest it very, very quickly. Very quickly. That is one of the most powerful tools that any of us can learn. We should all be doing that every single night because it is the subconscious that animates, creates, 
our reality. What you experience today is what you created last night in your sleep. Really what you created two nights ago, three nights ago. You experience it today. Well, you can change what you experience today by taking that opportunity to envision it and feel it, tones of reality, tones of reality. Also, Neville Goddard taught us this wonderful maintenance energetic modality, which is called the pruning shears of revision. Karen, listen up. Everybody else, this is fire. Listen, okay? Essentially what it is, in that container of trance-like state, drowsy, before you fall asleep, which is a magical creative time. It's the time that you need to be working in. Start pruning everything that happened that day. I go to bed tonight and I start revisiting the things that I did today. Oh, I went to Starbucks. I went and got my latte. I saw Andreas, my barista. I saw Lindsay, they were great. Then I went to Home Depot and I saw this and I did this. And then I had this interaction with this person and it really didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And you know, when I was at Starbucks, I could have been a lot kinder. I could, I could have been a, a lot more loving. You just start looking at every experience from that tranced out space and anything that's not in alignment with what you want to create for your life, prune it, change it. Maybe you had an argument with your narcissistic ex. In that container of hypnagogia, prune it, reimagine it. You didn't argue. Instead, you had a conversation where this person understood you and this person felt you and this person loved you and this person was speaking life into you and this person was being helpful to you. Reimagine it. Pruning shears of revision. Do this every single night and you change the course of your entire life going forward. This is how you ensure that the next day that you live is in alignment with what you want to create for yourself. These are just some tools that can help you because you need triage. You just need some help. Space. Self-care. Put some headphones on. Feed your soul. Read some books by Neville Goddard. They're also on Audible. Like Listen to that on the loop. Listen to that on the loop and work in that space of magical time before you go to sleep. Also, by the way, when you're waking up, not entirely awake, drowsy, also very magical. A great time to work with the subconscious at that time as well. Went on a little long, but that I think helps everybody who is here.